it's looking at measuring the water usage in a tailwater backup system. So the water usage in siphon systems has been evaluated on numerous occasions where it hasn't been done uh, extensively in these bankless systems as they are now. So oh, we, we talk about the, the water savings um, and so it's a great time to prove it, to, yep. to actually get real figures and it's great to work with you guys. Um, and then obviously you guys got moisture probes and everything through the paddock and we're pretty sure we're not overwatering it because we, we, it would show up in our yields. Um, our yields are, are pretty good proof that it is working but it's good to get it on paper and yeah, we're coming into it looking at, well, we, we will learn something about how we're irrigating and we might be able to change something. So the growers are currently managing these systems through their own experience. So they've, they might have used the system for a couple of years and they learn how it works. And they, in this, in this system, they would, they would irrigate each, each bay differently because of the way the tailwater is managed. But the types of measurements here, they actually enable us to determine what was actually applied into each bay and help, help refine those decisions. So in these bankless layouts, the, the, the characteristics of the bankless channel itself are important. So the size of the channel, the, the depth of water in the channel, the amount of the, the flow rate in the channel. So we took some measurements um, of, of the water surface and of the uniformity of the sill at the top end of the field to try and characterise whether it was a well-designed or a well-managed system. So the key pieces of information we need to capture the soil infiltration characteristic are the, the inflow of water into the field and the speed at which water moves down the field. So at this site we had multiple measurements of the flow onto the field, both back at the start of the channel system and into the bay and even within the furrows. And then down the field we had advanced sensors to pick up when the water reaches various points along the field and we, and we trialled um, a range of techniques here as well on this side. So the three important measures are the application efficiency, the required efficiency and the uniformity. So the uniformity is how uniform we can apply water across the length and width of the field. The application efficiency that, that tells us how much of the water we apply to the field actually goes to where it's needed into the crop root zone and the requirement efficiency that tells us did we satisfy what the crop needs, did we, did we satisfy the soil moisture deficit. This site was designed quite well and was managed um, as probably as well as, as it could have been but for our observations at the site we were able to see that there were potentially some losses going on because of the uniformity of water movement between bays. Um, so there is still a small, a small um, room for some improvement in the system. So in order to achieve a, an optimally watered crop, what we want to do is apply the right amount of water and evenly across the field. So the types of things we could do is improve the um, management of that water, improve the, improve the times at which the gates are open and closed and help improve the uniformity and reduce any over application and make sure we have sufficient water applied to all parts of the field. I like um, nearly everything about the system. Um, I'm, as you know, I'm pretty passionate with the system because I've tried a lot of things and uh, had, had a number, uh, numerous failures. And uh, this one for us ticks all the boxes. So what I like about it is, um, the first thing I like is we use less water. The, um, that's number one. The second thing is uh, we can grow higher yields and so what I think I guess the message that I'd really like to get across is saving water doesn't mean about being miserable and uh, I guess decreasing your yield. It, you, you can do both and so I guess this system for me does, does those things. Then you pick up all the, I call it the, um, the add-ons, so we've got machine efficiencies as, as those, uh, the planter, the cultivator, sprayer comes through, we don't have to knock headwork down or put it up, and so everything's done quicker. And the bank like it, those concrete structures and things, even the bank manager comes around and he goes, geez, I can see this um, being a good thing, and when they see it, it's just, yeah, she's a no-brainer. So, so once we've got the valuer on board, so the valuer is on board, the bank's on board, really everything else is easy. And uh, so that's where, we are, that's where we're at. So there are tools available to help growers manage normal flow irrigation better, but those tools are not really available for bankless systems. So 
part of a, a really big research need is to is to better understand how these systems work and then be able to model them and be able to provide advice to growers on how to better manage the systems and how to improve their water use efficiency.